Hello, engineering students. This is Dr. Brenzi here, and I want to talk about the truss simulator for a little bit just to show you how to give me the strength analysis that I'm asking for for tomorrow's uh, milestone. So let's pretend that this is the truss that I am working with, and um, what I'm expecting here is, first of all, when you go to annotations here, Make sure that this members box is checked. What that does is that gives me all of these zeros here. It gives me a zero for each member of my truss. And then when I go to apply a load, it will tell me how much that member is in tension or compression. So once I made sure that I have all these zeros up here, then what I want to do um, is I want to go to the center bottom node, which is the one that my um, pointer is on right now, and I want to click and I want to drag up. Now that's counterintuitive because if you want a downward force, normally you're used to clicking and dragging down to tell something to go down, but for some reason this goes in the opposite direction. So you'll notice that in the center of the screen here I have a blue arrow and it's pointing down onto the node that I selected. So we are applying a load of 60 um, arbitrary units. We could call them Newtons, but we could also call them other units if we really wanted to. And then as I look around here, I see other numbers. So I'm looking for large numbers here. It looks like this number says negative 66, which means that this is in a lot of tension right here. And then this node or member here right here is in a lot of compression. So those are the going to be the weak areas of the truss. And all I'm expecting is that you, uh, once you have this load applied and you have all of these um, tensions and compressions on the screen, then you're just going to take a screenshot of this, send it to me via email, and that will satisfy the requirement for the strength analysis of your truss. All right, um, so if that's all you need to know, then you can go ahead and pause the video now. But if you are interested in getting a little review on how to create a truss on this program, stick around and I'll show you how to do that right now. Um, so let's go ahead and clear this load just by clicking on the node again, and it will remove that load. And if I want to edit this structure, then I can go up here to where it says Edit Structure and click on that. And once I do that, you'll notice that all the numbers went away. And now I have a different menu item where I have a member here. And I have a blue button which represents a node. So if I want to insert another node onto the truss, I could just click this and it will turn red. And then I can take my cursor anywhere onto this field and click where I want new nodes. Uh, if I decide that I've made a mistake, I can hit this undo button and undo all those. If I decide that I want to delete a node that's already on here, I can click on that node and it will show this funny looking menu item but you actually don't need that. These actually represent supports for the bridge and you only have two of those. But if I want to delete this node then I just select it. It will turn red and show this little menu item and then I can hit the delete button and when I do that watch out because it deletes all the members that are connected to it as well. So if I decided I didn't want that structure, just be aware that if you delete a node, you delete all the members connected to it. And that means that I would have to create new members. And the way to do that is you go up here to the top, you click on this bar that looks like one of the members, and then you can drag, click and drag from one node to another node and you will connect them. So if I decided I wanted to go directly from here to there, I could do that. And that's how you create new members. A um, couple of other features here. Uh, if you want to save for a rainy day, like if you decide you want to walk away and work on this later, 
what you can do is you can click this export load button and when you click on that it will show a very long text box make sure you select the entire text like that and then I'm gonna hit control C for copy and then I'm going to open up a text document of some sort it could be word it could be a regular little text file if you know how to open those up let's just uh, open up Microsoft Word here and let's drag this into the window here I hope oh it gave me a funny message hold on here okay so once I have Microsoft Word up and running I can hit control V for paste and it will paste a bunch of ordered pairs and some funny looking letters so um, then I could save this document and then when I want to go back what I could do let's say that I go back to the program and I reload it and it goes to its default truss if I decide I want to reload my own truss I go to edit structure then I click the export load button then I double click and hit backspace to delete all of that stuff that's already in there and then I can go over here to my document hit control C to copy this stuff and then copy it into the box so I delete the old stuff copy the new stuff in and then when I hit enter it should load my new truss and there you go so I can save my work for later and now I can just start off with where I left off last time and so that's how you edit um, the truss and then when you want to go back to testing you just hit this button where it says test structure and then we'll be right back to editing or testing for our load and then we could uh, put another load on it that points down and see that there are new tensions new compressions yeah, I've actually made this worse now, right? Because that used to be 66, and now I've made it even more tough on this member right here. That's even in more compression than the one was before. So that probably wasn't a good change for me. All right, but that's at least how you make changes and how you use the um, truss simulator. And it will uh, also show you what you need to do for the strength analysis. All right, and I uh, look forward to seeing you soon. Bye.